Hi, and welcome to this new YouTube series. So this is uh, Ableton for the Curious Minds, uh, where I'm gonna show you some of my favorite um, features in Ableton Live, Max for Live, uh, and some third-party uh, standalone instruments and effects and MIDI sequencers and so on. Um, so today, uh, yeah, I'm just going to introduce myself. So my name is Mikael Lind. I've been making electronic music since um, 95 or something I started. Um, and I um, have a 15-year experience in Ableton and a 10-year experience in Max. I mostly use Ableton and Max within my Ableton, like Max for live. Um, uh, so let's get into it. So today I'm going to show you the Harmony Bloom by Mario Nieto. Um, oh, this one, this is my Mario Nieto Worlds. Let's go back. So there you see it, Mario Nieto World, Harmony Bloom. This one, a really cool sequencer. It's apparently for iPad as well now. I haven't tried that one, but I have it for the um, um, computer. Then I'm going to use Reactor 6, the full version. And this one, model 80, um, a five voice synthesizer by Softube. Uh, so I'm going to start here by showing you Harmony Bloom with the model 80. I'm just going to show you how sort of good it can sound. I have the promenade, which is like a preset you get. I changed it a little bit. Uh, so it's a f you can get it, this preset for free if you, if you have the um, Model 80. And Harmony Bloom is over here. And you need to um, have MIDI in from Harmony Bloom. So I choose Harmony Bloom here, and then not post effects or pre effects, but Harmony Bloom again and monitor in. So the Harmony Bloom needs to be a VST and then it reads the MIDI data from this. This is a um, this is placed as an instrument so that's why you can't like put um, another instrument after it. Which is, then we just like replace it. So you need to have it in a separate channel. Same with the reactor here. So you can see I take MIDI in from reactor, reactor 6 and the VST, not the audio unit. Uh, let's see first how it sounds. I'm gonna, um, yeah. So as you can see here, it just um, it, it reads the notes that goes go through this this bar here, and it has a note collection, which is called Marion notes here, which is Marionita's own uh, kind of uh, collection of notes, I guess magic notes and then you have major scales and minor scales so i can put in a minor scale to begin with um, here you can choose the roots so i can do for convenience i'm going to do an e minor and you see here that the note it starts on is also e3 but if i change this here the note minimum it will still be in this scale but obviously the notes it's picking from is going to be different but it's still going to be transposed into E minor so you see that's so that's a nice way to like uh, you can play this on a keyboard if you just have the MIDI input here and you can you can't see it but I'm playing <laughs> C3, D3. Okay. Um, I'm gonna also quantize it to 30 second notes here. And now the fun can begin. Let's just show by the speed offset. Um, so this sort of speeds up from the center or speeds slows down. So now it's like. Now the 
pattern is going to be ever evolving. So let's try the other direction here. That's pretty cool. I'm going to put it at zero for now. Um, and then randomize the free offset. There's so like time distance between none and notes. And the even offset. Uh, where you can delay some even notes, like where you can get really interesting patterns. I don't always understand exactly how it works. I just sort of try different things and until I think it sounds good. So and then loop length, and uh, then it sets the speed in which it takes to complete a full loop. So if you slow that one down, you can get maybe like complete a loop for every beat. Maybe at two. Probability, like, how likely is it that the notes are going to be played? So if you have like 20%, every fifth note is going to be played, sort of, and you don't know exactly when or where. This seems like a quite a little, but yeah, let me see. So maybe I'd keep this at 80, so four out of five notes are going to be played in average. You know? Then you can like increase the sort of soundscape if you want to by putting some kind of delay on it. And a reverb maybe. I really like the round, which is from Native Instruments, this one. It's really lush, maybe too lush here, let me see. So. Okay. Um, if you want to see. So now I actually have it transposed an octave down. Now I have it transposed two octaves down. That's actually kind of nice because I love how this Model 80 sounds in the low register actually. Um, okay, so I'm gonna turn off the monitor and then I'm gonna do the reactor 6 here. So I'm using this with uh, the. Um, uh, this is called, uh, let me see, this is drift, yeah. So drift is kind of cool. You have this drift function uh, that makes it a little bit more alive, a little bit less digital sounding. Um, I just picked a preset here also, and then you can choose whatever you want, you know. So if I open up Reactor 6, I might have to, let me see. So sh maybe I'll do it again to sort of show you what I did. So uh, MIDI from Reactor 6 and Reactor 6 monitor in. Here you have play and in under Reactor Factory Library sequencers you have Spiral. Um, it's usually a bit crazy in the beginning, so I'm just going to turn it off until it's sort of Settles speed is so if I turn on the speed and then start to listen. So let's choose the um, E minor here as well. So they should actually line up pretty well, these two sequencers now, and play in the same key. So, how many notes do I have? 11. So here you see it's like a similar principle. I do like Harmony Bloom a bit better. I think it's more um, intuitive. But this is also kind of fun. Um, maybe I make it a little bit faster. I'm not sure what all of this actually does all this. Let's just sort of try to try things out and see. But here at least you have the pitch and the spread. So if I turn down the spread, there's gonna be less spread between the notes. So if I make it really large, you're gonna have like really low notes and really high notes. So that's the kind of cool for function. Uh, same with velocity, but turn it down. I'm not sure if I 
have much velocity sensitivity in the um, drift, but you know. So maybe let's see how they sound then together. sequencers if you're especially for music like inspired by Steve Reich and stuff like that so yeah thanks for watching this uh, first episode of my new video series for Ableton users hope you enjoyed it thanks <laughs>